how many farmers I've talked to over the last few years that said, oh, I've got this secret recipe, this thing that I do on my soybeans. I don't even want anybody else to know about this because it's working so well. I'm putting on a fungicide and I'm also putting insecticide on at the same time. And man, I'm getting some good yield response from that. You know, it's not only yield, but the other big thing we talk about here all the time in Ag PhD is we have to make money on the farm. Since insecticide and fungicide prices have crashed in the last five years, well now all of a sudden it's really economical. And I understand that soybean prices aren't where they were just a few months ago. But still, even if soybeans were $5 a bushel, if you only have to spend a couple bucks on insecticide and you can spend as little as 3 to $5 on fungicide, Boy, that is not very much money you have invested in that crop. Let me start with the insecticide part of this first, because honestly, if you uh, talk to anyone in the industry, if you talk to university experts, this is the area where they're a little bit concerned that farmers would just spray insecticide even when they don't see bugs in the field. We're not in favor of that. We would suggest scouting your fields first, finding out if you have any harmful pests out there. Then you'll start determining, well, are there enough bugs for me to worry about it? Let's say, for example, you had one soybean aphid in the entire field. Well, you'd say, okay, I did find a harmful bug, but he's not at a level that's gonna cause me any economic loss. When you think about what insecticides cost, two to three dollars an acre for the most part, depending on what bug you're trying to kill, well, if you only need to justify two to three dollars of yield loss before you go out and spray and you say, well, it's going to cost me another three or four bucks to spray the field. Fine. Let's just say it's one bushel. If you could get one bushel more soybeans, it's going to pay you at least a two to one return on your investment. That doesn't take many bugs out there, but it does take some. So you want to scout and make sure you've got a harmful bug out there that you need to control or a combination of several harmful bugs then it's worth putting the insecticide in. That was where I was going next because we've been out in our fields this year. For example, normally we're looking for aphids and bean leaf beetles. Well, guess what? This year we've seen grasshoppers. We've seen stink bugs. We have also seen Japanese beetles. So some insects that we don't normally see, we don't have a lot of those. But, you know, by the time you add all these different insects, these harmful insects up, that's a real problem. Besides that, it's not just the feeding damage that they do. In fact, if you want to look at how much feeding damage actually hurts the crop, most of the time it's not much. Just look at the hail charts. Just look at any hail studies that have been done in the past at the different stages of growth that a soybean crop is at, or for that matter, any crop, and you'll see, boy, it takes a lot of defoliation to actually hurt yield. But here's what happens. When that feeding occurs, not only is the plant opened up for just any random disease that could show up, but also quite often we'll find some of these insects are carriers for certain diseases. So that's the real problem. It's not just the defoliation, it's the injection of disease into the plant. Let me give you an example. Bean pod model virus. Wow, that's a virus. That's not a fungus and it's not a bacterial disease. We've got no answer for that. Once you have bean pod model virus and it's getting spread out there by bean leaf beetles or whatever bug would happen to be a vector for that virus, well, you can't stop it. So when you see harmful bugs that could be containing uh, some sort of virus or disease like this, you've got to stop the bug to protect your plants. You can run with a cheap pyrethroid. That's generally speaking our recommendation. But if you've got insects resistant to that cheap pyrethroid, you may have to go with something like a bifenthrin. Uh, that's kind of the next level of pyrethroid. Or you could go with Lorsvan and organophosphate or some other insecticide out there or some kind of combination. Whichever way you go, most of these insecticides are really, really inexpensive. Like Darren said, two to three dollars. You might spend as much as four to five if you do some fancy combination of multiple modes of action. The next thing you want to be looking for in your fields is disease. Now, if you're already seeing a bunch of disease out there, you're too late with the fungicides. You've already given up some yield. But you want to identify what kind of disease you have. You can take a look at the free Ag PhD Soybean Diseases app. We put that together along with the American Phytopathological Society to show you all these different diseases that could potentially be out there in your soybean field. Uh, you can look, you can try to identify what you got. Let's just say, for example, that frog eye leaf spot is really common in your area or you're concerned that that may be moving into your soybean crop. You have to get that preventative fungicide out in advance. 
Now the ideal time to spray starts once you get into the reproductive phases. So R1, first flower, is the time where your soybeans are really under a lot of stress and they're more susceptible to these types of fungal pathogens moving in. Now you're going to spray a fungicide and think, all right, I'm good now, right? Keep in mind that fungicide only protects the tissue that you sprayed it on. So if you have new growth, new trifoliates, these types of things, they're unprotected and you'll have to be coming back every couple of weeks if you have a lot of disease pressure in your area. Darren mentioned spraying early, spraying at the beginning of reproductive stages, spraying preventatively. All those things are great, but here we are late in the season. So the question is, is it still worth it to spray fungicide? Well, in many areas of the country, I, I know certainly in our farm, we have been exceptionally wet. We have a tremendous amount of dew every single morning. There absolutely is going to be a lot of disease out there this year. So yes, we already did our early treatments, but you know what, we're coming back again. We need it again. We also talk about, hey, when the crop is small, you can sometimes get by with lower rates. If the crop is really big, especially here over the next few weeks, if we're talking about a really big crop, you're probably gonna have to run full rate. So you might spend a little bit more money. Also, we would ask you to consider using multiple modes of action. Now there are several that are inexpensive. You can also go with more of a Cadillac program. It just depends on what you want to do. So I can think of a number of different products that I would consider here kind of at the top end, like let's say it's Preaxor or Triva Pro, Stratego Yield, a bunch of really good ones. You also could take some generic products and mix those together to have two or three modes of action. But the key thing here is we just want you to take a look at what do I have for potential on my farm in terms of yield and also in terms of disease. If you're saying, hey, I've got good yield potential, I have a lot of moisture, I very well could have disease, it's probably going to be worthwhile to spray fungicide. When you do that, if you have almost any bugs out there, you're already making the trip across the field. So all we're saying is insecticide if it's only two or three dollars you don't have to have many bugs to spray and I can just tell you on our farm almost every year for the last 15 years we've used fungicide and insecticide and had great results and a lot of people around the country have as well. While you're out scouting your fields you may notice our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 